Costello, where have you been? Look at you. Your clothes are dripping wet. Your shoes, what happened to you? Oh, I stopped to get a drink at the faucet outside the street. Faucet? Yeah. You dummy, that's no faucet. That's a fire hydrant. Fire hydrant? Yes. No wonder I went halfway to Pomona by gutter. Down. Ah. <laughs> gee, gee, gee. I gotta get these wet clothes off. Yeah. Because uh, I, if I uh, don't uh, get. Now, <laughs> what's the matter? Ah. Now, uh, please, how many times have I told you when you sneeze, sneeze the other way? I don't know any other way. <laughs> you please talk sense, will you? Do you realize you've probably caught a cold? Do you want the germs to spread? Oh, I won't let them spread. Uh, how can you keep germs from spreading? I'll make them wear a girdle. Oh. <laughs> now, that's ridiculous. You've got a cold in your head. How are you going to keep that cold in your head from going down into your chest? I'll tie a knot in my neck. <laughs> Yeah, but what are you talking about? You're not so healthy. Oh, I'll have you know, my friend, that I keep regular hours. Every night I go to bed with a chicken. How do you all get in that little coop? <laughs> no, no, I'm trying to tell you that I go to bed early. And I'm up at the crack of dawn. Then I go out and chop wood for breakfast. Chop wood for breakfast? How can you eat that stuff? <laughs> Listen, Costello, I chop wood for exercise. For example, every morning I jump out of bed and crawl around the room on all fours. You crawl around on all fours? Yes, that's the athlete in me. <laughs> athlete? That's the monkey in you, brother. <laughs> oh, hey, here's Ken Niles. Say, I'm glad you dropped in, Ken. Take a look at Costello. He doesn't feel very well. Oh, just let some of the air out of his head. He'll be all right. <laughs> I mean, you got a lot of nerve. You got a lot of nerve there, Niles. I mean, talking like that. Well, we're with such a swell head like you got. Oh, I'll have you know I'm not swell headed. Oh yeah, you're the only guy I know who gets the mumps about the ears. <laughs> now take it easy, Costello. You're a sick man. Who's a sick man? I'm all right. I just got a little, 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 little. Ah! Good heavens, bud. Did you hear Costello sneeze? What's wrong with the way a little... The way I sneeze with a little thing like that? What's wrong with it? What's wrong with it? Well, if you have to sneeze, why don't you sneeze with your mouth closed? I tried that once and blew out three of my teeth. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Costello. Your sneezing is dangerous. I can catch your cold. Then go home and my beautiful wife will get it in her lovely throat. Her lovely throat? Yes, Costello. Mrs. Niles has a neck like a swan. Yes, and she's got webbed feet to match. <laughs> I heard that remark. And, Mr. Costello, you might be interested in knowing that all my friends think I have perfect features. Is that your nose, or are you looking through a periscope? <laughs> oh, stop that. Don't pay any attention to Costello, Mrs. Niles. You see, he's got a cold, and we're trying to help him. Well, you know the old saying, starve a cold. Now, the first thing to do is to put him on a diet. No carbohydrates, no starches, no liquids, and no solids. Um, <laughs> You think you can stick to that diet, Costello? Sure. Then what? Then Kenneth and I'll split, split your ration bowl. Oh, nice story. <laughs> I heard you the first time. You're going to split it. Oh, uh, it was almost a wonderful joke, Poochie. <laughs> oh, don't say that, darling. You're my Poochie. Ah, uh, no, no. You're my Poochie. No, no. You're my Poochie. <laughs> if there's a dog catcher in the house, what are you waiting for? <laughs> And as for you, Costello, I hope your cold is nothing trivial. Well, I don't blame them for going out. The only way to avoid the flu is to flee. What's that? I mean, you've got to flee flu. <laughs> got to flee flu? What kind of book is that? I'm trying to tell you the only way to be free from flu is to flee when flu flies. <laughs> when there's flu, everybody flees. Did you say flees? Certainly. I flee, you flee, he flees, she flees. What, I got a cold or a flea circus? <laughs> you don't understand. To avoid the flu, you've got to flee. I got to flee. Get him off of me, then. Get him off. I don't want any flea. No, 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 no. I, I, don't, I don't mean fleas like, like flies. Oh, let the fleas like flies. I don't want to break up no romance. No. <laughs> Look, it has nothing to do with fleas and flies. I'm trying to tell you to avoid the flu, you must flee. The only way to be free from flu is to flee when flu flies. Oh, you mean that to be free from flu, I gotta flee when flu flies. And the fleas and flies have got nothing to do with the flu. Now you've got it. Now I've got it. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, let me put it this way. You're in the house. You open the window, 
And a cold germ comes in. A cold germ comes in? Yes. What would you do? I'd give him a cup of hot tea. Who wants a sip and germ on the house? Now, that's crazy. This cold germ attacks you and immediately starts to uh, germinate. Before you know it, you've got a lot of nasty germs rushing through your system. According to my system, the Russians are rushing through the Nazi Germans. <laughs> Well, uh, that's true, Costello, but I'm talking about flu germs. Do you realize that germs travel with the speed of light? Now, one little sneeze. What? Uh, uh, there you are. There you are. The germs are off. They're already travel They've already traveled from California to Maine. They are now crossing the Atlantic. I didn't even say goodbye to them. Costello, right now, at this very minute, someone in Europe is catching your cold. Hello? Why the point is the flat? Well, I sure fixed it out. Yeah, what do you mean? He's just sneezing now. The coffin will come later. <laughs> and the orchestra dress up an old favorite, Alone Together. Waiting for me and my girl 
And sometime I'm gonna build a little home for two or three or four or maybe more in love land for me and my guest. Hey, Abbott! Hey, Abbott! What's the matter? Now listen, Abbott, I, I'm telling you, I, I really, I haven't got the flu. Now get me out of this bed. Now come on, get me out. Now stop that screaming, Costello. I'm you want me? Just pull that cord by the bed. Oh, I did. And what happened? My pajamas fell down. <laughs> now, Abbott, if I have to stay in bed, why don't you give me some attention? Uh, what are you talking about? Didn't I, didn't I put some cracked ice on your head? Yeah, but you didn't have to wait till you got the ice on my head before you cracked it. <laughs> now, Abbott, for the last time, I'm telling you, what am I doing in bed? Well, it's uh, part of the health building course I got from Professor Hercules. Starting tomorrow morning, you're going to get out of bed at 5 o'clock. Then at 5.10... Back in bed. Uh, no. No, no. At 5.10, you jump into a nice cold shower. And I whistle. Uh, you don't whistle. I gotta whistle. Why? Well, there's no lock on a bathroom door. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Look, pay attention. At 5.10, you jump into the shower. Can't you just feel the ice cold water <laughs> running down your back? Now stop that. Stop that. It's cold. Stop it. Then at uh, 5.20... Back in bed with a hot water bottle. <laughs> Listen, at 5.20, you take a bouncing horseback ride. 5.40... Back in bed, face down. <laughs> then at 6 o'clock, an hour of wrestling. 7 o'clock, two hours of handball. 9 o'clock, you walk 30 miles with a heavy pack on your back. And 12 to 1, you climb a mountain. 12 to 1, I don't make it. <laughs> oh, you idiot. You never listen to me. Just wait till you see Hercules. Exercise has given him bulging biceps, rippling muscles, a massive chest. He's the strongest man in the world, the mighty Hercules. Come in. I am the mighty Hercules. <laughs> Honest, I am. Honest. <laughs> see, Costello, take a look at Hercules. Get a load of that muscle. What muscle? The last time I saw a muscle like that was on a sparrow's ankle. You know, I could chalk his head and use him for a pool cue. Hey, Costello. Well, he reminds me of a radio program I heard. One man's famine. <laughs> Mr. Costello, as I analyze your case, my treatment for you should not be pissed down. Let me show you what my course can do for you. Hand me the telephone book and I will tear it. Are you ready? And now the second page. <laughs> Hercules, what's so great about that? I can bend bars with my bare hand. Uh, uh, Costello, now don't be silly. You're talking to the mighty Hercules. Yeah, Mr. Costello, I'm a mess of muscle. You're a mess of something, brother. <laughs> and while I'm on a subject, you ain't seen nothing yet. Just feel my muscle. Where is it? All I can feel is one little corpuscle. Yeah, but ain't it got a hot head? <laughs> Look, Abbott, for the last time I tell you there's nothing wrong with it. Now you've got to get me out of this bed. Now give me a lift. All right. What was that? I got the nose caught in the bed spring. <laughs> Come in. Good evening, gentlemen. I'm Peter Loring. <laughs> oh, Mr. Costello, I've come here to offer you the services of my sanitarium. I understand your health is run down. Now, wait a minute, Lori. Who told you all this? Oh, now, but you see, I get messages through my brain. My mind is like an open door. What do you hear from the knob? <laughs> Quiet, Costello. Let me handle this. Mr. Lori, you say you have a uh, private sanitarium? Oh, yes, and it's just the place for Mr. Costello. It is out in the woods. In a very lonely spot, where he can get away from it all. Far, far away. I don't want to get that far away! <laughs> get me close to the town now! Get a lot of people around me, too! Ring those bells! Blow those horns! Blow those horns! Please, I don't please! Boys, I've got to have it! 
When you're around, I've got to have noise. <laughs> but please, Mr. Costello, you're scaring me. I'm scaring you. <laughs> Just, there's no sense in shouting. That's right, Mr. Costello. Let us speak low. I don't want to speak low. I always talk loud. All right, happy New Year. Get him out, everybody. Here's some John Charles Thomas. On the road to that's enough, that's enough. Hey, uh, they like it. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> Look, pay, pay no attention Who to him. Who is this Frank Sinatra? Will, will you... <laughs> Never mind. Pay no attention to him, Mr. Lorry. I'll bring Costello out to your sanitarium tonight. Oh, yes, please. And at midnight, I hope. When the moon is down. No, tomorrow, when the sun is up. Way up! When you like, brother, lots of lights. We're going to turn on a searchlight. Costello, you're acting like an idiot. Uh, yes, Mr. Costello. I have had thousands of patients at my sanitarium, and I've never had one of them complain. You know what that proves, don't you? Yes, sir. Dead men tell no tales. <laughs> Connie Haynes sings the new hit tune, I Couldn't Sleep Awake Last Night. I couldn't sleep awake. Because we had that silly fight I thought my heart would break the whole night through I knew that you'd be sorry And I'm sorry too I didn't have my favorite dream The one in which I hold you tight I had to call you up this morning To see if everything was still all right Yes, I had to call you up this morning Cause I couldn't sleep a wink last night I didn't have my favorite dream The one in which to hold you I had to call you up this morning To see if everything was still all right Yes, I had to call you up this morning Cause I couldn't sleep away
now back to Abbott and Costello, who are en route to Peter Lorre's sanitarium. The time is midnight. <laughs> Well, Costello, we'll be at Peter Lorry Sanitarium in a minute. He's a great doctor, Costello. He'll see that you get some rest and peace. That's what bothers me. I don't want to rest in peace. Quiet. <laughs> Listen, a friend of mine was just about to die, and Dr. Lorry pulled him over the hump. Which way? <laughs> Well, here it is. Peter Laurie Sanitarium, 1313 Gravesend Road. What an address! <laughs> Look at the sign on the gate. Deliver all bodies in the rear. <laughs> all right, now stop complaining. Look how quiet and peaceful it is out here. <laughs> That's the first robin I've heard this spring. <laughs> oh, shut up. Quite a part, wasn't it? You know, Lou, this is the kind of a place I've always wanted to visit. Look at that green stuff clean to the gate. That green stuff? Me! <laughs> now, don't be such a coward. Go ahead up to the door and knock. Oh, so you think I'm a coward, huh? Okay, yeah, but I'll prove you that I'm, I'll prove you I'm a hero. I'll be brave. I'll show you what I'm made of. I'll knock on a door. I'll go in there. But before I do it, there's just one thing I want you to do for me. What's that? Talk me out of it. <laughs> now, none of that. Go ahead. Knock on the door. Don't be afraid. Why, Peter Lorry may not even be at home. He's home all right. How do you know? I see a straitjacket hanging on the line. <laughs> Costello, once and for all, will you please knock on the door? Okay. All right. How do you do, gentlemen? Did you ring? No, I knocked. <laughs> I thought I heard you whistle. <laughs> Let me have your hat, please. Don't you want the coat, too? No, just the hat. Just the hat? Who are you? I'm a skull. I'm just going out for a walk. <laughs> Come on, Abbott. That's all. Let's get out of here! It's quiet. Here comes Peter Laurie. Ah, oh, good evening, gentlemen. Welcome to my sanitarium. Now, come, Mr. Costello. Let me take you over here. Go to the fire. Come on, no pushing, Laurie. Quit shoving. <laughs> hey, Abbott, help me now. Come on, Costello, help me out. Costello, Costello. The guy's pushing yeah. me the fire. No, nothing of the kind. What's the matter with you? Yes, I mean you no harm. It's cold out tonight. You must be killed. Uh, uh, I mean, chilled. I heard you the first time, brother. <laughs> Get what I'm calling brother. Uh, uh, please. Please do not excite yourself, Mr. Costello. All I want you to do is to take a pill. I'm not taking no pill. I'm taking a powder. Now! Come on, Abbott. Wait, wait, wait a minute, Costello. If you want to cure your cold, you've got to listen to Dr. Lorry. Abbott, I'm not sick. All I did was let out a little, 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 <laughs> ah, shoot, a sneeze. You see, you must not minimize your illness. Here, take this little blue pill. I ain't taking no pill. You heard the man. Take the blue pill. Oh, you always went out. Okay. Oh, very good. Now take this red pill. What's the red pill for? Oh, that's in case the blue pill was poison. Get away with those pills, Mr. Lorry, will you? Just a minute. Be calm. Take it easy. Relax. I don't want to relax. I want to jump. Come on, everybody. Get up. Let's dance. Come on. Come on, everybody. Guy? You see, alone? Doctor? You see, Doctor? Sounds like I'm alone. I... <laughs> you see, Doctor, I told you that Costello was in bad shape. What he really needs is some exercise. Oh, splendid. Let's go out and play some golf. Golf? At midnight? Oh, yes. Oh, last night I played a fine game with my friend, Frankenstein. Now, there's a gruesome twosome. <laughs> It was a very interesting game. <laughs> Frankenstein made a hole in one, so I buried him in it. <laughs> you know, I, I play a very hot game. Hot game? You probably play in the lower Hades. <laughs> the lower Hades. Oh, doctor. 
Uh, uh, excuse me, please. That's one of my patients. Oh, Doctor. I just killed my keeper. Yeah. I just killed my keeper. Well, well, first, why did you kill him? He killed me first. <laughs> Yeah, but now that guy wasn't kidding. Now there's a body behind the couch. I, is he dead? I can't tell. His head is missing. <laughs> hey, Costello, look. The body is getting up. Abbott, he's coming towards me. Listen, mister. You're dead, ain't you? Yes, I am dead. Then why aren't you laying down? If you must know, the floor is too cold. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last straw. I'm getting out of here. Now, stop worrying. There's nothing wrong with this place. <laughs> what was that? One o'clock. Let's go. <laughs> Mr. Costello, I think you're running a temperature. I must call my assistant. Who's your assistant, Dracula? Oh, no, no. I'm mad at him. I caught him stealing from my blood bank. <laughs> Dr. Laurie, the operating table's all ready. What? What operating table? You ain't operating on me. I'm not hungry. You're not hungry? You heard me. I don't want any cold cuts. Oh, I must. <laughs> I must insist, Mr. Costello. My diagnosis shows that the sneeze caused your cold, which caused poison to run through your system. This has affected your appendix, and your appendix must come out. Put him on the operating table, boys. The first guy that touches me gets a fat lip. <laughs> now, that's no way to talk. You must follow your doctor's advice if you ever expect to get well. Okay, then. Laurie, I'll let you take out my appendix on one condition. Good. What's the condition? You've got to take it out from the back. From the back? <laughs> from the back. That's right. But why? Because i got a battleship tattooed on my stomach. And he is liable to sink it. Oh, yeah. Here's Abbott and Costello with the final word. Thanks, Ken. Well, Peter Laurie, it certainly was nice to have you with us tonight. Yes, I certainly... That's not your it. line, please. Excuse me. Oh, thank you, Bud. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Costello. I hope you didn't mind coming to my sanitarium. You should come again sometime. I will. On visitor's day. Oh, oh another thing, uh, Mr. Costello. Uh, uh, you should take care of your cold. You see, flu flies, and in order to be free from flu, you must flee when flu flies. Say it again, Laurie. All right, I will. Uh, I mean, without the script. I'll get out of here. Good night, folks. Good night, everybody. Good night, Mom.